Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own split screen templates that you've probably seen in a lot of acapella music videos. YouTubers and acapella artists have been doing this for years like Mike Tompkins as well as Andrew Huang and it's just an interesting way to visualize different instruments that they are making with their voice. But it can also be used in commercials or any other types of commercial editing that you're doing. So what will I be showing you in this video? First, I'm gonna show you how to use guides and the rulers inside of Premiere Pro to set up your framing. And in this particular aesthetic, I'm going to be leaving little black gaps between all of the frames. Of course, you can do any color that you want. This is just one way of doing it. It. And then after that, I will show you how to animate the different split screens into frame. Now, if you don't want to have to set up the different split screens for every single composition and you're looking for something that will be easy to just drag and drop your own media, I've created my own template with 10 different animated sets that are already there that you can just drag and drop your videos in saving you a ton of time. The template that I designed personally myself is now available on my store. It's on sale and I've linked to it just down below. And I'll briefly show you how to use this template after I show you how to set up your own split screen. And lastly, a huge thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video and providing all of the videos, all of the music and sound effects that you have seen in this video thus far. If you're a filmmaker, if you're a YouTuber like myself and you need to just quickly find some stock music, some stock video, or you need a new logo opener or a lower third and some background music, you can just download and test any amount of assets because it's unlimited and you can use it in any number of videos. I have a unique 70% off your first month deal down below, but if you're like, I need this year round, they already have 50% off their annual plan, which is a great deal, highly recommend it. So links are down below and also my time codes are below. So if you wanna skip around to different chapters to review different sections, you can just click on those chapters down below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. So for this demo, I'll be animating in two frames a few times just to show you the skills to use to create your own split screens and you can apply the same steps to any number of frames that you create. First, you need to create your main landscape sequence and you can make it in 4K or 1080 Full HD. I'm using the 1080p Full HD, so I'm just going to select this 1080p preset and I'm going to name the sequence a two split. Now with the program window selected, we are now gonna view and go to show rulers to help us measure and divide up our splits evenly. So this frame is 1920 pixels wide. If you divide that in half, you get 960. So we can create a guide by clicking on the left ruler and dragging this out so you see kind of like an aqua colored line here and you can pull this to be at 960 and now you know that this is the halfway point. So for this particular look, I don't want the frame to be exactly at the 960 marker. I'm going to add a black gap between the two frames. So depending on how big you want your gap, that'll determine uh, how many pixels you're going to subtract from the frames that we're going to be building. So in this case, I'll be doing a 10 pixel gap. So that means that I'm going to subtract five pixels from each frame because we're having two, which will equal 10. So let me show you how this works. What we can do is we can move the guide to 955 pixels, and then we can create another guide by clicking over and then move this to 965, which is 955 plus 10. So that means in between here, we now have our 10 pixel gap. And now we can make our placeholders for the shots. So the reason why I'm making placeholders and I'm not just dragging my video right away into the sequence is I'm making a placeholder so that way in the future, if you ever wanna swap it out for a different shot, you don't have to recrop it and change the framing every time. It's already going to be in the right place for you. So that's why we're going to be using placeholders, AKA nested sequences. So a sequence within a sequence that's a particular frame size. So for this particular setup, each frame will be 1080 pixels in height because that's the current height of our sequence and the width will be 955, which is the pixel width until the black gap. So we're going to go down to new item and select new sequence. Then 
we're going to the settings tab and we're going to change the horizontal from 1920 to 955. And let's call this shot one. And then you can hit okay. And then we can duplicate it to make shot two. So just right click on this sequence from the project panel and select duplicate and we can rename this to shot two. So now we can drag our footage into shot one sequence. And remember when you drag it in to keep the existing settings so it doesn't change our custom frame size that we made. And then you can go to effect controls and make adjustments to the position and scale until the framing looks good for the shot. And now we can do the same for shot number two. Let's drag in our video file and make some adjustments using the effect controls. And now we can then go back to our main sequence and we can drag in the shot placeholders that we just created. But before we do that, make sure that you turn this sequence icon on here. So make sure it's blue. And doing this will make sure that when you drag the sequence into a sequence, it'll just pull in the sequence. Now we need to move this sequence into the right place using the guides that we previously created. So go to effect controls and we can move the position over until it's nearly aligned. And then we can zoom in using the zoom control from the program panel here. And then we can get more accuracy as we move this into the correct place. You can also click on this wrench tool icon to turn off the transparency grid so it's easier to see the guides. And then we can go back to the fit view and let's do the same with shot two. Let's drag it in and stack it directly on top of the first sequence placeholder. Then select shot two and from effect controls, just like before, we're going to move it in alignment with our guide. And then once it's in place, you can go up to view and turn off view guides. And now we can see that we have our nicely aligned to split. So now that it's all in place, now we can do the fun animation part. So let's start with shot one. So select this nested placeholder, move the playhead to the point where you want the video to be in frame. So let's go up to effect controls and let's set a keyframe here at this exact playhead point. Now roll the playhead back to the beginning of the clip and use the position controls to just move it off frame to the left. You can also select the last keyframe and right click and select ease in so it's more of a smooth animation. So now we can move the playhead back to the end point of this animation. And that way we can do the exact same animation with shot two, but from the other side. So let's go up to effect controls from shot two and let's set a keyframe here at this exact playhead point, then move back to the beginning and then move this shot off to the right this time. And once again, you can right click on this last keyframe and select ease in so they both animate in at the same time more smoothly than just a linear animation. And now we have a nice animate in, but what if you wanna have two more shots come in? This is where we can make it a little bit more interesting and it will just involve duplicating what we've done and making a few adjustments. So go to the project panel and let's duplicate shot two, two more times and let's rename these to shot three and shot four. Then let's open up shot three and four and let's drag in our new video clips to replace them with new clips. And once replaced, we can drag in shot three and shot four on top of shot one and shot two in our current two split sequence. And remember that the length of each placeholder when you drag it in will be determined by how long the clips are inside. So you can always cut these down and you can roll these to meet the endpoints. But just so you know, you will only be able to roll it out depending on if there's clip media inside of these sequence placeholders. Then we're going to copy shot one. So command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy shot one, and then right click on shot three to paste the attributes. And here we only want to paste the motion. And let's do the same with shot two. Let's copy it. And then we're going to right click on shot four and paste attributes motion only. And now the position animation that we did on shot one and shot two are on shot three and shot four, but they both animate in on the same time. So what we're going to do is select a shot three and shot four placeholders with the audio layers too, and we can just move it to shift it over. So that way first shot one and shot two animate in, and then a little bit later, depending on what time you want it to animate in, shot three and shot four both come in. 
So you can repeat this process for however many shots that you want to build in that motion for this two frame split. Now, what I've done is I've actually created a template with 10 different sets of different variations. Some have multiple different shots, multiple framing, more complex animations. It's a great starting point to then drag and drop in your own media. So the link to download this template is just down below. If you guys are a patron supporting my Patreon community, you will get this template for free so you can follow along. So let me briefly show you how to use this template with your own video. So after you download the template, the best way to import the template is by starting in your existing project and then drag the template project file into your project panel. It basically just takes the Premiere Pro project that I built with the 10 split screens and imports it into your project panel. So then you can open it up and see all the different bins and placeholders that you can customize. And one of the questions I've gotten from my previous templates is how do you reuse the different sets if you want to use one set multiple times throughout your video? Because when you start replacing media from one of the sets and you duplicate that, it will replace the previous sets. So to duplicate a set, all you have to do is import the project file again. So you would just drag and drop the project file into the project panel again as many times as you want so you can reuse different sets multiple times. So the best way to get started is to open up the all sets sequence and you can double click to open up that set that you want to edit. And then you can open up each placeholder just like I showed you before and you can drag in your own media into the shots just like that. And when you purchase the template pack, I included an instructions file. And in that file, I have a more in-depth tutorial that shows you how to customize the in and out animations and deal with multiple different sets and reorganizing them for your final export. So I hope that you found this video tutorial useful and explore the template as well to see if it might fit into your workflow. Uh, thanks to all of my monthly patrons who support this channel. If you become a patron, you can get the template, this exact split screen template for free. So thank you to all the patrons that help support the channel. And again, thanks to Invata Elements for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget that I have my 70% off exclusive link just down below in my description box. That's all for this video. And as usual, keep creating better video with Gal. Bye.